I'm Peter Eisler. Welcome to Classics. Today we'll go to the magnificent and historic waters of Narragansett Bay and the town of Newport, Rhode Island, considered by many to be the hub of American yachting. We'll look back at the life and work of one of America's greatest yet least recognized naval architects, C. Raymond Hunt. The work he began nearly 70 years ago designing both powerboats and sailboats continues to have a major effect on the world of yacht design today. This Ray Hunt Rendezvous is the first planned annual rendezvous or during which well-known designers will be represented. Uh, Ray Hunt was chosen for the first one because he designed Easterner, which was one of the 1958 America's Cup challengers and which is now back in Newport. We are celebrating my father's uh, life, his life in boats. Um, that has been all we've ever known him as, always involved with boats. Welcome back to Classics. Ray Hunt's ancestors date back to the first settlers in Plymouth in 1620. His grandfather, Cassius Hunt, founded the Duxbury Yacht Club in the 19th century. And it was his profound, almost mystical understanding of the ocean and its forces that made him one of America's greatest innovators in yacht design, despite the fact that he had no formal training in the subject. A lot of it was totally intuitive and remembering. I mean, he would go and part, he would separate from the fleet and people would go and say, he's crazy. But he probably remembered five years ago when he was sailing in the same waters that the wind would come in from a different direction with a certain temperature and cloud formation, and it would. And um, so if you combine all those things of a person that understands nature really well and how it reacts, has the real feel for a boat. I'm now, I've never seen anybody sail a boat the way he could. Yeah. Ray was on the north shore of Cape Cod, and I was on the south shore. But I met him in Boston, and the first thing we did was rent a uh, 
office on 50 State Street. We were trying to sell used boats, and Ray wanted to do some designing. Concordia Yalls were one of the best designs that he ever made, and they're still going strong. Out of the 103 that were built, first one in 1938, they're all still living. She was built in 1955 in Germany. Ray sailed her with great distinction with his family in Cow's Week in 1955, entered six races and won six races. She was shipped back to this country and we sailed her in 1955 and 56 and I bought her in the fall of 56 and I've had her since. This boat is 41 feet long and it's she's sloop rigged most of the Concordias are yawl rigged, and the bulk are 39 feet overall. On the waterline, there's very little difference, only a few inches. Uh, below, they're all very, very similar, all natural wood finish. There is no fiberglass involved, and they're all God's own creation. So it's just been a great boat. I've done a lot of cruising with my four children, and uh, she's part of the family. And uh, these boats take a lot of maintenance, but luckily I've had lots of help and it's all done by professionals. I'm not sharp enough or smart enough to do all the varnish work, but they're just marvelous boats to go to sea with. In the pre-war years, obviously this is the depression still. You had people who were still out of work. In the span of maybe two years, they sold 400 hulls, which was incredible in that time period. Most builders would build maybe a half a dozen boats a year. I first saw 110s when I was a little kid. I was sailing little dinghies, and all the teenagers had 110s. The hot rod on the harbor, without question, was the 110. The 110 uh, keel, hull design, uh, and rig, uh, the V-bottom hull, all of these were brought to the masses. Uh, they modified the boats so that they'd have a trapeze. You have the guy hanging by a wire in a little harness with just his feet on the boat. Most people are used to seeing Hobie cats today, but that innovation was really developed and perfected with 110s. They're kind of squirrely, they're difficult to sail, but uh, they're an amazing thrill. There's nothing really like it. Um, it's, it's just pure water line and, uh, and no compromise whatsoever. This boat is uh, designed exactly like a 110, uh, which is a, uh, has two very pointy ends. It usually takes four people to sail her, and um, I love having a, a hunt-designed boat because uh, first, he was so special, and then uh, second of all, here at the Museum of Yachting, we have, uh, we have awards for it, so I've, uh, I've been fortunate enough to win some hunt awards. And one of the, one of the most fun things is to have people chase you down and go, you know, I've sailed on that boat 40 years ago and, and that kind of thing, and so that makes it a lot of fun.
mid-40s, the Concordia Company began developing a successor to the 110, a boat that would be longer, more comfortable, yet still be a day sailor. The new 210 class sloop embodied technologies and design elements that remain with us today, a testament to Ray Hunt's vision. Ray Hunt built this boat, 210 number one, the very first one, about 52 years ago. Um, two years ago, we celebrated the class's 50th anniversary. And this boat raced. Um, it's still a competitive boat. When any kind of rot sets in, they replace the, the wood. Um, I don't know how much of the original boat is here, but certainly the framework is all there and this boat can sail competitively with some of the newest boats out there. That's part of the beauty of a Ray Hunt design, is it almost never goes out of style. I never had a chance to go actually on it sailing, and we went yesterday, and it was uh, it was such a smooth, beautiful uh, experience. Uh, I was I was kind of taken back. I knew it was going to be exciting, but uh, I took the helm, and there was absolutely it was just like having uh, having a wheel on air in your hands. It just it was in beautiful beautiful balance it, it uh, we were going upwind and uh, I just didn't need to keep it upwind it was it was just just magnificent it was fun to get back on it fun to feel the, the boat and there wasn't any question that most people felt that in 58 and 62 this was one of the fastest 12 meters that had ever been designed it, she's a big boat you feel the weight and uh, the weight and the power behind it. Uh, the, the mainsail alone is a little over 1,100 uh, square feet of, of mainsail. There's a, there's a lot of drive from it, um, and it's. I think you feel that in the in the momentum of the boat. I've always thought of Easterner as being special because she was the uh, only 12 with a uh, a natural finish, and uh, that's been maintained beautifully by the present owner. Welcome back to Classics. Ray Hunt's sailboats are certainly inspiring because of their innovation, beauty, and their speed. But in fact, very few naval architects have been able to successfully cross over between sail and powerboat design. 
Ray Hunt was an exception. In fact, many believe that his greatest works were his power boats. My father's greatest contribution to boating, I think, has no question, is in the power field. Hunt started with his uh, hunt form, which is a bell-shaped section. And it, it has chines out here, and then it's rounded into a, a bell. Um, <clears throat> that smoothed the ride considerably, even though the, the run was still fairly flat. The run is the after section where the, the boat actually planes. We designed a 42-foot hunt form which was the predecessor to the V hull for Brad Noyes. It was a 42-footer with a 1,500-horse pack, and it was the fastest yacht in the world at that time. I was fortunate enough, again, the first V hull was built right over here in Jamestown, and I took the very first ride on this vessel, and uh, we turned around out there in the West Passage in October, and it was great big seas running in from the southwest. Ray said, now this is the true test, and he headed the boat downwind down the channel with all those big seas and she went just as straight as a string and he said gentlemen i believe we have something that'll work by the late 50s he was designing these these really deep v power boats uh and i think again what what he did in concept was to make the boat very v so it would have a very good ride and then kind of design innovate around the other issues like if it was going to be very very v so it wasn't going to be stable enough what you do well you put a water ballast tunnel in it to bed a little bitty boat and you put the strakes you put on the boats to try to keep, get back some of the lift he thought he was losing by making it so v-shaped so he really focused on how do i make the boat really a you know this better sea boat uh he uh, that deep v uh was it was unique i mean it, and still is i think uh it's sort of amazing because he he, he grew up as a sailor that he ended up uh, you know designing a uh a power hull that uh is, uh, has been so successful. I always look at Hunt as, as being the uh, father of the modern powerboat. Virtually every major powerboat manufacturer today has some derivation of Raymond Hunt's original uh, deep V hull with the 24 degree dead rise. was the first of the, of the pilot boats, was a 50-foot steel hull, deep V, diesel pilot boat. And, and it, was, it was really uh, somewhat of an experiment because it was quite heavy for what we were trying to do. And it was on the borderline of being too heavy. And the, the pilots didn't know what to expect. This is a uh, Ray, Ray Hunt design, deep V. Uh, semi-displacement hull. Uh, the boat is designed for uh, its sea keeping abilities and its uh, performance in uh, most weather conditions. As far as the uh, sea born community goes, it's the uh, best hull design for the work that we do, which is offshore work. been fooling around with square flat bottom boats and, and with sea sleds. Well, a sea sled is a two hull boat with a hole in the middle. And the Boston Whaler, in very simple terms, initially was a sea sled with a third hull stuck in the middle to get rid of the cavitation of the propeller of an outboard motor that was in the middle. And that's where the, where, really where they started with that design. But the Boston Whalers were evolved in detail a lot by the people in the Boston Whaler Company. But the concept was really uh, what, you know, the hull was really what Ray contributed to that. The Museum of Yachting's sponsorship of the Ray Hunt Rendezvous 
demonstrates their commitment to the preservation of America's maritime heritage. For any yachtsman visiting Newport, Rhode Island, the museum is a must-see. We do a, uh, a mix of commercial and pleasure craft, and you can see some examples out here. I mean, there are probably still a concept that Ray was interested in, you know, a lot of years ago now that are, that are still to come. And the interesting thing is the Hunt Associates probably is more uh, doing what Ray Hunt was doing, you know, 30 years ago today than ever. This boat has the same controls that number one sitting up by the museum has. They're just in a different place. Some of the fittings are a little more up to date. What I wanted, a, a clean boat, simple boat, and a boat for the year 2000. How do you do? You did great. I mean, one look says it all. All of the upwind controls are in the seats and all of the downwind controls are up forward. And what's nice is all the controls that I want to be able to play with are right next to me as the skipper. Can't wait to sail it. This evening I'll get to sail it for a little bit. I've never christened a boat before. This is going to be fun. I've always had a used boat. This is the first brand new one. In honor of the memory of a man whose great design has provided so many years of pleasure for so many people, I christen thee in the hunt. All right. And I will be in the hunt, I'll tell you. Watch out, Jeff. Oh, I got my new boat dirty. Legacy of Ray Hunt lives on all around the boating world in every harbor of the U.S. Literally all around the globe, you can see his design influences, like the deep V hull. Hey, these Boston whalers are everywhere. And fittingly, his 12-meter masterpiece, Easterner, continues to grace the waters of Narragansett Bay. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm Peter Eisler. See you next time on Classics. Mm -hmm.